Hey, Physique Freaks, how's it going? Scott Tuzan on MetabolicMasterpiece.com. I am on my way to the gym, getting ready for a killer back and bicep workout, really stepping up our effort. Let's get at her. And here we are, kicking the workout off with some trap bar deadlifts. This is my last warm-up set with uh, 280 pounds. Just getting a feel for the weight and the bar, the movement. It, uh, it's been a, a little while since we've done some deadlifts, probably about six to eight weeks. Uh, we've just been doing some Romanian deadlifts, good mornings, and other exercises to work the posterior chain. Um, so it kind of felt good to have a, a break from the deadlift, but it feels even better getting right back at her. Uh, this is also the first time that we've ever included deadlifts on a back day. So really stepping outside of our comfort zone and trying something a little bit different. Normally we do deadlifts on leg day. Uh, here I am, this is my first working set with 320 pounds and uh, aiming for 8 to 10 reps and we perform 3 sets here with about 90 seconds to 2 minutes rest uh, between sets. Just really loving the feel of this, love starting the back workout uh, with some deadlifts, really gets the, the traps engaged, upper back engaged, really the whole posterior chain. Um, but we enjoyed it. I think it's something we're going to be doing more often, working it in here and there on, uh, on back days. Next we move to pull-ups. This is some rest pause sets. We're doing six to eight reps on the first set, the activation set. Leave a rep in the tank. You're gonna rest for about 10 seconds and then do as many more reps as you can. You're gonna see Rick step in here. He's gonna give me a little spot. One thing that we've been doing this month is some forced reps on our last set. So this is my last set of pull-ups here. Rick's just going to get underneath my toes to help me get a couple extra reps with good form. So these are forced reps, but my form stays the same throughout the whole movement. This is my preferred way of spotting. I like just grabbing Rick's shins there. It's how I prefer him to spot me as well. I just did something a little bit different there. So I am hardly applying any pressure at all. I'm, I'm making him earn those reps but earn them with good quality form. I see so many people forcing out reps and their workout partner um, who's spotting them has to do a ton of the work. They're breaking their back trying to spot. They're, they're doing more of the work than, uh, than the lifter is actually doing. And that, that's not the ideal way, I think, in my opinion, to do force reps. I think force reps, you wanna just give that little bit of assistance uh, make the workout partner work, but give them just that little bit of assistance where they can still maintain proper form and squeeze out an extra extra rep or two. So that's what we've been doing this month and it feels absolutely freaking amazing. So we did three sets there, the rest pause, and now we're hitting rest pause again for the chest supported T-bar rows. Once again, we're going for that six to eight rep range on the initial activation set. Leave a rep in the tank and rest for about 10 seconds, and then do as many more as you can afterwards. You'll rest for about 90 seconds and then repeat that again. So this is another forced rep set for me. So this is my third set. Rick's gonna step in there. A little bit tough at times. Uh, that one, he gave me a little bit too much of a push at the top. So really helps to get to know your workout partner and um, where they struggle with, where you can give that little extra bit of assistance to to help them force out those extra reps. It's just all in all, it's been one of the things that have really helped us step up our game this program this month. Um, the, the big thing, as I mentioned in the previous video, is that we transitioned from a high frequency program to a body part split. So we had spent at least 16 weeks in a high frequency phase and then um, uh, now we shift it to a body part split where we're he hitting each muscle group once every five days. And just that change has been enough to really spark our enthusiasm, skyrocket our motivation, really get us to step up our game. And the other thing with body part splits is that you can really freaking give her. You, you give her, you can push your limits throughout the workout, um, leave nothing on the leave everything on the gym floor just give it your all knowing that you're going to have a full four days five days to recover before you hit that muscle group again um, so just the change has increased our effort including those force reps just on the last set um, that's important there i see a lot of people doing force reps on every single set i think it just 
burn yourself out. We still feel very fresh. We don't feel beaten down when we're doing forced reps just on our last set. So we perform our, our first two sets to momentary muscular failure. So you know that you're, you hit that last rep, it's good quality form. Uh, the muscles failed in a sense that if you tried to do another rep, your form would get a little bit sloppy. You could do that rep, but your form would get sloppy. To me, that's momentary muscular failure where you're doing, you're not really leaving a rep in the tank um, because you couldn't, leave. to me, leaving a rep in the tank means that you are, you could have another rep where you could do, um, perform it with high quality form. That's leaving one, one rep left in the tank is one more rep with good form. Whereas momentary muscular failure is performing the rep knowing that the next rep wouldn't be high quality form. Here we're doing some drop sets there. So that was six to 10 reps. And uh, so you just do those four, those four sets. You do as many reps as you, you would do six to 10 reps, drop the weight, six to 10 reps, drop the weight, six to 10 reps, drop the weight, six to 10 reps. So a total of four sets, and then we're gonna move on to, uh, to the next exercise. So all in all, I mean, we just feel we feel pumped. It's been an incredible few weeks of, of training here. I think this is our third cycle going through this body part uh, split routine. We're gonna go through it, uh, actually, sorry, fourth cycle. Um, so we're starting the fifth cycle of this. So it's, it's a total of four weeks on this plan. And we're gonna do something a little bit different for a week and mix things up, but uh, really looking forward to pushing it one more, one more cycle on this plan. Um, it's been fun. Just really, really loving the body parts split. Just a little bit of DOMS. Like we are pushing it. Um, the extra effort, the extra focused intensity is um, has been absolutely awesome. The rest pause training has been absolutely awesome. We love the drop sets. We love doing a forced set, some forced reps on the last set. It's a uh, we just we've really stepped up our game in the gym. It's been a lot of fun. I feel very invigorated. Maybe you can sense it in my in my voice here. Um, but we're totally pumped, absolutely freaking loving it, and uh, just having a blast. It's like, I don't know, maybe it's a change of seasons as well, as I've, I've mentioned previously. It's just, just change, change in general overall. Um, my enthusiasm is it's just sky high. I'm just, I'm loving the training. We're just having a blast here. So it's three straight sets of that machine preacher curl, and now we're moving on to the barbell curl. This is a rest pause set. Once again, six to eight reps. Rest for 10 seconds, do as many more reps as you can. Rest for about 90 seconds and repeat that two more times. Now, a few months ago, I recorded a video talking about why I love rest pause training and how um, recent research has shown that when you do rest pause training the way we're doing here right now, where you leave a rep in the tank, rest for 10 seconds and do as many more reps as you can, you will experience greater gains than if you perform a traditional set where you leave one rep in the tank. So rest pause training definitely has its benefits. It's one of our favorite styles of training and there's different variations of rest pause that we use. You see us using uh, myo reps, uh, 100 rep sets, uh, multi-angle rest pause sets. It's um, it's just it, it's a, it's just a great way, again, once again, to kind of increase that effort, push your limits and uh, just really squeeze out every last bit of gains that you can get uh, from your physique and from your, your training program. Rick's guns looking freaking awesome here. He's got some big freaking softballs hiding there under the skin. All pumped up, 52 years old. Gonna be 53 coming up in January. I'll be 40 in just over a week. I can't believe it. We are, we're definitely, I'd say we're at the, the top of our game right now. Um, the both of us. This is prime time, baby. It was a lot of fun training when we were younger, but just training a lot smarter as we uh, were aging here, having more fun than ever before, and uh, just soaking up this journey. Still making great progress, um, but more than anything, it's even if progress in the form of gains is a little bit slower than it has been in the past, it's progress and it's a different kind of progress. We just feel, we feel different denser, tighter, fuller, the different details popping out. It's all the fun little things that you get to play around with. Here we got some drop sets on the incline dumbbell bicep curls. Once again, aiming for six to 10 reps. 
I believe this second set I only got five. This is the toughest set out of them all. Uh, the second set is is a real challenge, and it caught up to me real quick there. I probably should have made a little bit of a bigger drop in weight between the first and second set, so I learned from that mistake. This week, I'll be making a change the next week, and you'll see as I get to the third and fourth set, the weight's getting lighter and lighter, but uh, it is still incredibly challenging. So the only rest you're getting is changing the weight, we're gonna do this four times and that will be it. This is gonna end the workout. But notice my form here. My arm is staying perpendicular to the ground. I'm not allowing that elbow to creep up. I'm going as much as I can flex at the elbow there and and that's it. Here, this, uh, this month I decided not to include that little supination of the wrist where I'm squeezing those pinky fingers inwards. It's just keeping my palms facing out there. So I'll mix it up from time to time. There's times where I'll start with a neutral grip palms facing each other and then supinate twist those pinky fingers in towards the top it's all freaking good this felt awesome killer killer freaking pump hope you enjoyed this workout uh if you try it yourself give me some feedback let me know how it goes uh, catch you next time have a great day